Hey students, um, this is our first online lecture for Math 418. Um, this is my my home office, so welcome. Um, I'm going to be recording um, lectures for you to watch, uh, and then we're going to have time in class to ask questions and go over examples and things like that. So um, the first thing that I want to do today is go over a full state diagram example. So this is a more complicated state diagram than what we've seen before. Um, how you build the recurrence relations and then how you implement that and, and do the um, find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors and look at the um, in behavior. So we can see one kind of full complicated example of that uh, before we go on. So I'm gonna do this, um, I'm gonna switch to a screen recording next um, so that you can watch kind of what I'm doing on my screen, walk you through some of the details, and then we will um, talk about it in in class on Tuesday. So um, I'm going to stop this and then switch over to the screen recording. This is um, our first screen recording. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to describe the model. We're going to build the state diagram, build the recurrence relations, um, and then put it into Excel and build a simulation um, and also look at it in Wolfram Alpha. So um, what you see here, so this is the species that we're modeling. So this is the wild teasel, uh, Dipsacus sylvestris. Um, it's an invasive species in the, um, I should say weed, an invasive species. I'll fix that before I upload the file to Blackboard. Um, so this is a weed, it grows very quickly, and so we're going to build a life cycle model so we can see kind of exactly how quickly um, based on some statistics that we've got. These are all from the textbook. Um, you can see this model there. So the teasel has a very complicated lifestyle, um, life cycle. Um, so there are six stages to its life. Um, so we have seeds which can lay dormant for a year um, or they can sprout immediately. Um, we have seeds that lay dormant for a second year, um, and then once they do sprout, they sprout into small, what are called rosettes, um, or medium rosettes, or large rosettes, um, and as those get larger, and then eventually they become flowering plants, which produce more seeds, um, and then more of these teasels. So the life cycle looks like this. You can see all the statistics here. Uh, I'm not going to read through all of them, but this is kind of what we're going to use to build our state diagram. So of your first year seeds, 1.3% um, become small rosettes, 0.7% sprout and become medium rosettes in a year, 0.8% become large rosettes, and 966 just stay as second year dormant seeds. So they don't actually sprout at all. Um, of the second year dormant seeds, only 1% become small rosettes. Those are kind of the seeds that um, aren't likely to end up anywhere, um, that aren't going anywhere. And then you've got figures for everything else. Um, of your, uh, eventually, some of these become flowering plants. So 2.3% of the medium rosettes, 75% of the large rosettes. And then once you've got a flowering plant, it produces more seeds. So 322.38 seeds per plant. So a lot of seeds per plant. Um, of course, only uh, a few percentage of those become new plants, but it still uh, means that the species ends up growing fairly quickly. Okay, so that's kind of the figures. If you were given a problem, this is the kind of percentages that you would be given. And then from that, you can build your state diagram. So I want you to see, this is the state diagram that I built for this. You can see it's lovely. Um, I would like for you to start trying to get your state diagrams to look neat like this. Okay, so make sure that you're communicating well. Um, this did take me a little bit of time. Um, I think I spent probably half an hour on this because it is a more complicated state diagram. Um, but uh, as you do these, you'll get better at them. Um, so I made all of this in Microsoft Word. Uh, it's grouped, but if you ungroup it in the Word document, you can see kind of how I put the pieces together um, and what I used to create the state diagram, and you can always copy and paste things like that. Okay. So I've got each of the states numbered. State one is first year dormant seeds, state two second year dormant seeds, and then you've got small rosettes is three, medium rosettes is four, large rosettes is five, and then state six is the flowering plant. And you can see 322.38. 
uh, seeds per flowering plant is kind of what you end up with. And all of the rest of these um, match up with the percentages that you saw in the previous um, description, in the verbal description of this. Okay? So that's my state diagram. From this, we can build recurrence relations. So the recurrence relations are on the next page. Um, you can see X1, which is state 1, is 322.38 times X6, right? And that's it. The only arrow going into state 1 is this arrow from the flowering plants from state 6, and it has number 322.38. Similarly, step 2, uh, um, the second year dormant seeds is going to be 0.966 times X1. Right, and you could see that. And then the more complicated recurrences built, get built out. From these recurrence relations, uh, we can build a matrix equation. Okay, and so you can see the matrix equation um, basically just has exactly what we've got from the recurrence relations, but with zeros put in place of any variable that's not being applied. So you can see this first line, 0, 0, 0, 0. That's because x1 is really... 0 times 320 uh, times x1, 0 times x2, 0 times x3, 0 times x4, 0 times x5, plus 322.28 times x6. Okay? And so this gives you a look at kind of how to put these um, recurrence relations into the matrix form. Okay? Once we have the matrix form, we can actually start to try and... Um, analyze this okay so I'm gonna go ahead and pull up Wolfram Alpha um, I'm gonna try and copy and paste this matrix I don't know if this will work uh, but we're gonna give it a shot see if it will copy and paste into Wolfram Alpha directly okay so pulling up Wolfram Alpha I don't think so, no. Um, nope, Wolfram Alpha doesn't like that. So, um, you would have to type this in by hand. Uh, this is going to take a little while, but just like we did in class, um, you type in each row individually carefully to not make any mistakes. Make sure you've got the right number in each of these. Point oh one three, point oh one oh, point one two five, zero zero three point four four eight next row point oh oh seven zero point one two five point two three eight zero thirty point one seven and then point oh oh eight zero zero point two four five point one six seven point eight six two and lastly zero 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 point oh two three Point seven five zero and zero. Okay. Let's make sure, let's see if that's a six by six matrix, which is what it should be. Okay, great. So we actually got our matrix that looks right. Um, and if you look at this now, um, as always, this gives us our eigenvalues um, and our eigenvectors. And so what you see here, remember the first eigenvalue is the dominant eigenvalue. That's the one with the largest 
um, uh, absolute value. And so the largest eigenvalue here is 2.32, okay? And so if you remember what we talked about in our last class before spring break, um, what this means is since it's larger than one, we have exponential growth, right? And if you subtract off one, you get that this is exponential growth at a rate of 132%, right? So 2.32 is the multiplier, right? Which the population multiplies by each time. Um, and so subtracting off one gets you the percentage growth rate. And so we're expecting this to grow by 132%. Again, in the global sense, eventually it will settle into growing by 132%, okay? And then uh, the eigenvector, which corresponds, gives us the um, kind of the relationship between the different variables, right? And so what you see here is that you've got 138 seeds uh, for every one flowering plant, 57 second year dormant seeds for every one flowering plant, 2.6538, uh, 15.1036, and 2.6326. Um, now, of course, what we're generally interested in is actually um, the uh, percentage that end up in each group, okay? And so what we would do is we would add all of these up and divide by that number, um, divide each of those by this number to get some kind of percentages, what percentage are going to be in each group, okay? What we'll see is that we can get that directly from the um, simulation that we're going to run in Excel. Okay? So I'm going to close down Wolfram Alpha. I'm going to minimize this. Um, I'm going to go back to now how to put this into Excel. So I've already got this in Excel. Um, you can see what I've done is I've put my matrix um, just like it was in the recurrence relation in the matrix equation right here in um, all of the uh, coefficients and then I've put them into Excel um, so I'm starting my initial population is one flowering plant uh, it turns out that it really doesn't matter what we start with but I'm gonna start with one flowering plant we ended up with one flowering plant um, somewhere and we're gonna see how quickly this uh, wild teasel spreads from that one plant okay if you look at the equations so for example um, the number of first year seeds is going to be 322.38, so G2 times G10 times the previous value. Um, maybe a little bit more interesting one if we look at small rosettes, that's um, B4 times B10, C4 times C10, D4 times D10, and G4 times G10, right? Because the other two are zero, so I didn't bother putting them in. Okay, and so what we get then is this complicated formula again making sure you put absolute references with the dollar signs um, around the um, coefficients and that gives us in the second year from that one flowering plant we get 322.38 first year seeds 3.448 uh, small rosettes 30.17 medium rosettes and 0.862 large rosettes and the flower and plant dies and so we don't have any anymore, right? And so these numbers translate exactly into this. But if you start to fill down, right? So if you take those and fill them down, say for 100 years, you get some very large numbers, okay? So what we see here is that it, then it becomes more complicated. So it's interesting, you'll see start to see patterns kind of emerge, just small things. You can see, for example, there aren't any first year dormant seeds um, after the second year because there weren't any flowering plants to produce them, okay? And then no second year dormant seeds after there were no first year dormant seeds, right? Same way here. And so you start to see these patterns, um, but what you can see is that this grows very, very quickly, right? So from one plant to... Um, 356.86 different plants or seeds, right? The number of seeds is growing very quickly also. Um, but even just the number of flowering plants, you can see we have one, then eight, then five, then 22, then 72, then 94. And this gets very, very large very fast, okay? So if you look at the totals, um, 
This is growing very quickly, which is what we'd expect from exponential growth. If you look at the percentages, right? So what this is, is just the percentage in each group. Let me run this down, fill this down. So you can see we start off with, um, oh no, something has gone wrong. Um, what's wrong with my formulas? Uh, do a bit of... Oh no! I don't know. It's just the percentages are are very very small here. Um, so what I can do is go ahead and um, add a few decimal places to these percentages. So you can see it's saying that there are 0% in flowering plants. And that's not actually true, right? This is just that there are um, a very small percentage, right? And so if you add one decimal place, you can see like 0.5% um, in the flowering plants, something like that. Um, I'll add two decimal places, so 0.46% is what we get, okay? As you can see, this stabilizes um, into that amount. If you want to look at a growth rate, you can look at the um, kind of what the value, once you kind of stabilize these out. If you look at, say, I110 divided by I I110 minus I109 divided by I109, you get a growth rate of 1.32 of 132%, exactly what the eigenvalue predicted, okay? And if you look at the eigenvectors, if you took all of those numbers in the eigenvector from Wolfram Alpha, so wherever that was, so if you took these numbers, 138, 57, 2.65, 15.1, 2.6, .1, and 1, added all of those up, and then divided each of those numbers by that, you would get these percentages that are appearing in the, uh, in the percentages of the population. Okay, so we steady de state down to 64% first year dormant seeds, 26.5% second year dormant seeds, 1.22%. Um, small rosettes, 6.93, medium rosettes, 1.21%, large rosettes, and 0.46% flowering plants, okay? So still a lot of flowering plants, right, because it's growing at 132%, but those 1.32 times 10 to the 36, this is a very large number of uh, flowering plants, is still only a small percentage of the total. Um, so... That's the example that I wanted to go through. I'm going to finish this video here, um, and then in our next video, we're going to start talking about a different kind of state diagrams, which is a Markov diagram. So thanks for watching, um, and definitely ask me questions if you have any. You can email me or ask me in our in-class sessions.